I'm Brian Vertz, and I'm here with Todd Begg, both of us partners in the Pittsburgh family law firm of Pollock Begg. Today, we're going to talk about how the coronavirus epidemic is affecting parents and children in custody arrangements. Todd, I have a few questions for you. As we sit here today, in the first week of April 2020, the courts in Pittsburgh and some surrounding counties are temporarily closed. Should parents comply with the custody orders that were entered before coronavirus hit? Well, Brian, um, the answer to keep it simple is yes. Um, not only is that the right thing to do in most custody situations, but the courts, including Allegheny County, have entered administrative orders indicating and requiring that uh, parties involved in a custody dispute follow all custody orders. Uh, further, you know, creating consistency for children in any kind of custody dispute uh, frequently is in their best interest. Creating a pattern of behavior, a pattern of exchanges, kids become used to that type of thing, and to stop it for any reason, including the coronavirus, can uh, work to the detriment uh, of the child. And I think most importantly um, and concerning is that if people um, and parties, and in this day and age, in some degrees, you could understand the rationalization, but if people do resort to self-help for all intents and purposes, um, we end up with a very, very chaotic, uh, problematic situation. Um, and it uh, could be a very difficult thing for kids and for the courts, uh, ultimately. I mean, we so, all, I'm sorry, Brian, go ahead. So what are some of the, the special circumstances that might cause parents to be concerned about following their custody order? Well, you know, again, you can envision situations where uh, there's uh, a healthcare worker uh, in one of the families who may have uh, exposure uh, to the virus, either indirectly uh, or directly. And as the parent who's not in custody of the child at that time, that would be a great concern to you, I would imagine. Um, there are situations where you have uh, long distance travel, uh, where there may be uh, exchanges in certain public areas, which could be problematic um, as you know, potential exposure uh, to uh, the virus. Uh, one of the other situations that come up in this type of situation, because everybody's working from home, uh, is childcare arrangements. And you have to make sure that a third party care provider hasn't been exposed as well uh, to the virus. Um, and Brian, always in any situation, virus or no virus, if kids are exposed to any kind of potential domestic violence or direct uh, violence towards the child, that is something that would be a special circumstance. But we have to be really careful in this time defining what a special circumstance is. Right. And I know that the courts are open to hear temporary protection from abuse matters uh, in, in those kinds of cases. Now, Todd, we've also heard that the courts may be hearing emergency yeah. custody motions. What's the definition of an emergency? Well, I wish I knew that answer, Brian, without the virus and with the virus. Uh, however, um, generally speaking, you're going to have to be able to convince the court that the child is an immediate potential physical harm or severe mental uh, health potential problems. Um, and that's always, always a very difficult uh, thing to determine. That's sometimes when children in uh, youth services uh, gets involved um, and can review the situation. But with the virus, we're gonna have to be exceptionally careful in defining um, what an emergency is. And again, the tricky part of this is it's very understandable as a parent that you would be concerned if the child is in, a, is in the care of the other parent who may have somewhere along the line been subjected to someone with the virus, that in your mind could be an emergency. Uh, and that's where the line is very difficult to draw. And frankly, that's where you need to work that out and consult 
with um, you know, an expert or a lawyer, if you will, to help, help you define that. Because the one thing I haven't covered and I would like to uh, just in general is, you know, we need to be very cautious because we all know that at some point the courts are gonna open. And, and at that point, um, we are going to need to be able to go to the court to the judge with good cause as to why or why not you withheld custody. Um, the court will be there at some point. So we have to keep that in mind. How long are the courts uh, going to be closed? And in the meantime, are the courts making remote access available to resolve custody cases? Well, um, it does appear now, given the most recent uh, orders of the court, uh, that it's conceivable the courts will be closed through May. Um, and obviously, that's a lengthy period of time. Uh, there is emergency access to the courts uh, in Allegheny County and potentially surrounding areas. However, each county is different. And that's a very, very important thing to understand. Uh, each county has a different process of how to do it. And frankly, even within each county, there are some differences in how the court is going to handle these issues. Different judges have different procedures. Different judges can have different procedures. They certainly can. Um, I know the court's doing the best that they can, given this incredible circumstance, but um, it, it, it is kind of an individual analysis with regard uh, to each county. Now, with regard to remote access to the courts, um, it, it's conceivable that that's going to increase as each day goes by or each week goes by. I have been involved in some Zoom uh, interviews, frankly, with a judge in a custody case and a child. I've been involved uh, in other phone conferences to, that's a little bit simpler. Uh, I think the court's doing a good job of trying to uh, catch up, and I think that's where technology will come in handy. For parents who are trying to cope with the current situation, what are your impressions about how to be a good co-parent in these circumstances? It, it's, it's imperative at this time, and it, it always is in any custody dispute, to try to minimize the conflict with the other parent. It, it, it just is. And particularly when you have the adverse circumstances that we currently have, being able to co-parent and communicate about what's in the best interest of your child. For example, you may have a set exchange point, um, but both parents realize that yeah, this might not be the best exchange point because there's too many people around. Well then, work together, keep it simple, and change that point. It's very important to try to put aside any of the personal problems, issues, or animosity you have with the other parent to try to do what's in the best interest of your child. That's always true in a custody case, always. But when you have these circumstances, it becomes uh, even more critical. Um, I understand, you understand, Brian, because we've been doing this for as long as we have, that some parents can't do that. But if you can, uh, then you have to try to do it. And it also harkens back to what I was saying previously that keep in mind, no matter what is going on now, the courts will open and the judges have been very clear that court orders must be followed. So if you're going to violate a court order right now, there will come a day when you're going to be in front of a judge and you're going to have to deal with the potential ramifications of that, which can be serious. Yeah, and you know, Todd, I, I also think about this from the kids' perspective. As difficult and bewildering as this can be for us as parents and adults watching the news, I can't imagine how tough it must be for grade schoolers and even high schoolers when they're trying to process this information. They really kind of look to us adults as role models to help them feel stable and get through these times. No doubt about it, Brian. And you and I are lawyers and we're not therapists by any means, but the stress the kids, uh, as well as adults, are seeing on a daily basis not involving their custody dispute or their divorce is um, overwhelming. And I agree. I mean, I think it's 
even more important than ever to make sure that you're creating stability with your children and that they understand that, you know, that everything's going to be okay and that the world's going to move forward. Todd, uh, is our law firm Pollock Bag currently open to help parents who are dealing with custody arrangements during the coronavirus epidemic? It is, Brian. Um, we are all, as a firm, working remotely. Uh, we have access to our emails. We have access to doing Zoom uh, interviews uh, of clients uh, in dealing uh, with the court. We're still taking phone calls, uh, which um, go through a central number. Um, you, our number is 412-471-9000. Um, and uh, we are completely functioning uh, as a law firm at this point. Um, we are even able, as I previously indicated and you discussed, to get some um, involvement with the court system. Excellent. Well, thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to resuming this discussion again in the future.